is happening, people, and welcome to the do's and don'ts of Sandbag Over Shoulder. Since so many people have chosen to start running the Everyday Carry program this week, thank you all very much. And the Sandbag Over Shoulder exercise is a staple of that program, so I thought I would just take a couple minutes and cover the nuances of this movement. Now, if you guys do need more in-depth coaching on the sandbag, on the atlas zone, on the keg, on the farmer's walk, anything like that, I'm going to leave a link in the description box down below to my weighted carry playlist that's gonna cover all the details on all those implements and everything that you're gonna to need to know. And also in this video, I'm gonna be referencing breathing and bracing a good bit so if you don't know what I'm talking about there I'm also gonna leave a link to that in the description box down below all right so stand back over shoulder the first thing that I want you to remember is think about the middles. Whichever way that you choose to pick the sandbag up, because there are many, the first thing I want you to do is find the middle lines of the sandbag. And then I want you to line up the middle finger of your hand when you are going to pick this thing up. Finally, once you're dug underneath, I want you to line up your middle finger as close to the middle of your foot or the middle of your body line as you possibly can before you go to lift this thing, because the closer that you have it to your spine, the lighter it is going to feel. Also realize when you are choosing which pick to do, the larger and longer a sandbag is, the less likely that you are to pick it up vertically. You're gonna have to pick that up horizontally, otherwise it is gonna get in the way of your hips or your legs when you actually try to manipulate this thing. Number two, do not apply force to this sandbag until you have sufficiently dug your hands underneath or you have laid the bag on top of your hand so you have a good, decent grip and purchase on the sandbag. Also realize here that chalk can be very, very useful when utilized with a sweaty or a slippery sandbag, but you do not want to overgrip a sandbag so that it goes out of your hands and onto your forearms. Otherwise, when you go to pick the thing up, sometimes it can slip right through your arms like a basketball through a hoop. So it needs to be in your hands, not on your forearms. Third thing that I hope you're gonna be able to apply is once you have that technique down of picking the sandbag up, it's gonna take a little bit of practice to kind of get used to it, but once you do, if possible, I would love for you to be able to get your air to breathe and brace before you reach down for that sandbag because you're doing a deadlift from such a deficit already that there's no way that you're gonna be able to get as much air into your core when you are down there with your diaphragm collapse as you are when you're standing upright. So once you have that technique down, you don't need to like rush too bad and screw it up. Get your air at the top and then bend over and grab the sandbag. Once you were there, I want you to think about pushing the world away the exact same way that you would on a deadlift instead of thinking about picking it up. If you think about picking it up, then your hips are gonna shoot up and you're just gonna get into a really ugly kind of stiff-legged deadlift to lift this thing. Now regardless of how you got it there, now the sandbag should be in the lap position. If it is a lighter sandbag, this is a step that you can end up skipping, but we will talk more about that in step number nine. Right now, you have a big heavy sandbag sitting on your lap. The first thing that you want to do is readjust this thing so that it can be higher on your chest. Now it is very, very tough to adjust a sandbag and hold your balance while you're in this kneeling position. So what I personally do is push the sandbag away from me just a tiny bit, then I move my body to the sandbag instead of moving the sandbag to my body. So I push the bag forward, put my chest to the bag to the point that my chin is almost riding on top of it. From there, it is time for me to readjust my arms. Now naturally, people think about wrapping their arms underneath almost like they're gonna curl this thing or scoop it up like a little baby and carry it around. That doesn't work whatsoever. Couple reasons why. Number one, you are super, super weak in an underarm kind of position like that. You are much, much stronger if you wrap your arms over top of the sandbag, almost at the like, 10 and two steering wheel position or maybe even the 11 and one because from then you can suck the bag to your body and use your back muscles to hold it there. When you are scooping underneath, you're holding with next to nothing. Second reason you don't want your arms underneath this thing is because when you go to raise it up, your face is gonna get in the way. You just do not have the real estate to move this thing. If your hands are on over top, then you can roll it all the way up your chest, past your face, and lift it to a platform over a bar or to your shoulder, whatever you're doing with this. But if you are under scooping it, you are just trying to fight it the entire way. No matter how you get there, once you have the sandbag positioned as high as possible on your chest, up near like your Batman emblem and your arms are thrown over top, the next step that you want to do is re-breathe and brace, huge belly breath, as big as possible, and then suck that bag towards you as hard as possible. Crush it like that thing owes you money. The tighter that you can squeeze this thing to your body, the lighter it is gonna feel. Your body works synergistically. That's why if you squeeze a bar on the deadlift, you'll be able to lift more weight. Same thing here. The tighter that you crush this thing to your chest, 
the easier it is gonna be for you to move. Step number seven that I encourage you to do is a little butt work to get some rebound out of the hole to get your hips moving as explosively as possible. The idea here is once I have the sandbag in position, I raise my hips just a little bit and then drop them into the bottom of the hole to get some rebound out because the faster that my hips are gonna move from point A to point B, the more vertical speed and power that I'm gonna have with this sandbag. But once you rebound out of the bottom, you wanna start moving your hips as explosively as possible and you want to fully extend them the same exact way that you would if you were doing a full max out vertical jump test. The idea here is to move as explosively as possible. So move light things like they're heavy and I want you to try to move heavy things like they are light. And then finally, step number nine is to speed the entire thing up. Like I mentioned earlier, if the bag's lighter, you don't necessarily need to stop in the lap position. You can kind of one motion it over. You figure out which steps you can combine or which steps you can skip to really play to your strengths and your abilities to make this thing explosive and fast as you possibly can. And then conversely, with heavier bags, you need to be methodical with everything excluding the explosion. Again, even though it's heavy, you still want to try to move that thing as explosively and as fast as possible but with heavier bags you do want to take special care to make sure that you have a good grip and a good purchase before you go to move anything on that bag quickly because if that thing slips whatsoever a big heavy sandbag can make you have a very very long poor day all right so that's what i got for you today guys i do thank each and every single one of you who has purchased the everyday carry program and you're going through it i hope it has been a blast for you so far and i cannot tell you how much that support helps me helps the channel just helps all of it. I do truly, truly thank you so, so much. And guys, I also want to thank you guys. Every single one of you has taken part in any of those coaching calls. I've had such a blast kind of increasing them and meeting more people, getting to know you guys. I've gotten in such interesting conversations and talked about stuff that I never thought I'd be talking about with random people on the internet. And now a bunch of you, I consider you my friends or at least acquaintances. And it's, it's really, really cool. So I thank you guys so much for absolutely everything you're doing. I thank you again. Just for all the support and just all of it. It's just been amazing and I've been very, very, just so happy since I've kind of reapplied myself back in this channel and uh, you guys have just been so supportive, so I thank you. I will catch up with you the week until I do go out something amazing in my lives. Keep working hard, people, be nice to each other and I will catch up with you then. Man, that was, let's let's start that over. I will catch up with you the week until I do go out something amazing in my lives. Keep working hard, people, be nice to each other. That was much better. That just felt better. I feel better about my soul now, I feel better.